I'm going to be showing you different ways to use the various equipment that help us sit in a comfortable way to meditate. Meditation isn't always 100% comfortable, but we can do things that can make it more comfortable if we're not um, having, if we are having some problems. So I'm going to start by showing you how to sit in a chair because at various times during our life, we might need to sit in a chair, maybe after surgery. And then as we get older, we'd like to continue meditating, hopefully until we die. So we might be meditating even in a wheelchair. So this is a typical chair. This is a folding chair. And unfortunately, one aspect of most chairs is that they slant down. And what happens is then you lean back into the chair and then you end up slumping like this. We want as much room as possible for breathing. So we want to open up this abdominal and chest area. And there are several ways to do that in a chair. Uh, one would be to put something behind you, like this, so you're a little better supported in your lower back, and that naturally brings your shoulders back, so you have a nice erect posture without slumping. The other basic principle of seated meditation, whether you're in a chair or on the floor, is a triangle. And the triangle is made by your two knees uh, and your sit bones under here, or the base of your spine. And you want your knees to be lower than the base of your spine. And you can see when you're sitting in a chair that slants backwards that my knees are maybe on a level with the base of my spine or maybe a little bit higher. So what I need to do is take some kind of cushion and put it underneath me to bring the base of my spine up. Now you can see it's very clear that my knees are lower than the base of my spine. And of course, to keep that triangle, you don't want your knees together because then you get tippy again. You want your knees separated. So now I can have a nice erect posture and stable because of this stable triangular shape. Now, all of these adjustments depend on the size of your body. So some people have short um, lower legs below the knee, and they might be sitting in a chair and discover that their legs are dangling. So let me show you what to do about that. So if you find you're sitting in a chair and your feet are dangling, that's a very uncomfortable position and it's hard to keep your knees separated. So what you want to do is find something to put under your feet, some kind of little cushion or folded towel. It doesn't really matter what it is. Something to support your feet while you're sitting. So you can lean forward and feel your feet firmly on the ground. This is a more firm cushion and a little bit higher. But anything will do. You don't have to buy a lot of special equipment to be able to meditate. Now I'm sitting comfortably. My knees are apart and lower than the base of my spine. And my feet, because of the support cushion, are feeling completely solid on the ground. So we've got nice erect posture. And the, the way I find is easiest for creating an erect posture is to bend forward and then roll up from the base of the spine, almost one vertebra at a time and then push with your sit bones so your spine elongates. Some people say pull, imagine a string pulling you from the top of your head, whatever works for you. So the spine is elongated and then relax it, relax it. And what we say is imagine that your shoulders, which carry a lot of tension, are like a silken kimono hanging from a coat hanger. So your shoulders are soft. Now the next question is, what do I do with my hands? And there are several postures you can do with your hands. In Zen practice, and you'll see this on most statues of the Buddha, we do the cosmic mudra. And the cosmic mudra is done with the right hand under the left hand, and then the thumb tips gently touching. And you can imagine that you're holding the whole world or the whole universe in your hand carefully, taking care of it. The nice thing about this posture is your hands will be here against your hara, against the tan den or the tan tian, your center of gravity. And then all of the acupuncture mer meridians 
are coming together in one place. So that energetically, that's quite nice. Now, some people, again, have longer arms or shorter arms. So if you find you're having to hold your arms up like this in order to hold your hands in this mudra, you might take something and put it under your hands like this. Again, it could be a folded towel, a pair of socks, it doesn't matter. And then, then you're not having to hold up your arms. The cushion is helping you. Another nice uh, advantage of the cosmic mudra is that when your thumb tips touch, you can actually meditate on this point where, the, where your thumb tips touch. Or if you're doing some other form of meditation, periodically check where your thumb tips touch. And if you're getting anxious or tight, often you'll find your fingers are like this, your thumbs are like this. Whereas if you're falling asleep, they will have fallen apart. So this is a kind of little biofeedback check as to whether you're relaxed but not falling asleep. Great. Now I'm going to show you some of the postures where we're down on the ground. So we have a nice uh, support cushion under us. We call this a zabutan. But you could fold up a blanket or two and make your own at home without having to buy any extra equipment. One way to sit on the ground is to use a sitting bench. And you'll notice that a sitting bench has a slant. So this one, we want it, we want it to slant down towards the front. Again, the base of my spine is higher than my knees. My knees are apart, about, oh, about 9, 10 inches apart whatever's comfortable. And for some people, it, if their ankle is tight, they need to move back and hang their feet off the back of this um, base cushion, the floor cushion. So I'm going to move back and show you that. That relaxes the ankle joint and is more comfortable. And if that's not completely comfortable, some people fold something up and put it under the ankles for a little extra height. Now I showed you one uh, hand posture, which was the cosmic mudra. Some people like to sit with their hands on their knees. It has a different effect on your mind, and you can test that out. Hand on thighs, and sometimes with the palms up, which is a more receptive posture. So it doesn't really matter as long as it's a stable posture for you, and you can sit for a while without moving. Now, one of the disadvantages of sitting in a kneeling posture is that your hands have no support. And if you have long arms in particular, your, your hands are going to drag your arms down, which will create some tension in your shoulders. So again, you can put a support cushion here in your lap to hold your hand like a little shelf. And then your shoulders can be relaxed. You can also do a kneeling posture like this with cushions. And what we do then is take one of our round cushions, most meditation cushions are round like this, put it on end, pat it down and make it into a kind of saddle, and then tuck it in here. So it's like a sitting bench, but softer. And by the way, if the sitting bench is too hard, you can put a blanket or a towel or a cushion on top of it or if, it's, if you need to be a little higher. Um, especially people who are tall or have long legs often need a higher kneeling bench or a cushion to bring themselves up higher. So now I'm seated on a cushion which is vertical. And again, knees apart, base of the spine higher than the knees. And again, I might need something here to hold my hands. And if this isn't high enough for me, for instance, some people have thicker thighs or longer legs, and this isn't high enough for them, you can put another cushion on top. So you can build yourself a little Cadillac kind of cushions. So now that's quite high. It's a little bit too high for me, but it would be good for somebody who's taller or has long legs. Now I'm going to show you the cross-legged postures. So for the cross-legged postures, you want to pick a place to put your sit bones that won't cut off your circulation. So that's usually far back on the cushion 
are far forward on the cushion. But you just have to figure out where that is through trial and error, where that is that's most comfortable on a sitting cushion. And if you really have trouble with your legs going to sleep, uh, we have air cushions that we use that are just uh, wonderful and won't cut off your circulation. But they take a little bit of adjusting to get used to. They're a little bit roly-poly at first. Okay, so I'm going to sit cross-legged and I'm going to demonstrate probably the most common posture since we did not grow up sitting co cross-legged. So most people think, oh, I've got to be in the full lotus. No, you don't have to be in the full lotus to uh, have really good meditation periods. This is called the Burmese posture. In the Burmese posture, your legs are kind of tucked in. And you can determine which leg you want to tuck in first, close to you. And then you can come forward, make sure your knees are down, and a little bit lower than the base of your spine. What you don't want in a seated posture is for your knees to come up like that. Now, some people, when they first begin to meditate, their thigh muscles are tight. And, and if that happens and your knees are up, but you really want to sit on the ground, you're going to need to put some support under your knees so that you're not exerting effort to hold them up in the air. So if I had to do this, you can see my knees are quite a bit higher than the base of my spine. So I would, I would somehow stack up some cushions so I'm higher and maybe make these support cushions lower. But again, you just have to experiment with that. So this is Burmese posture. Then there's a quarter lotus where you bring this foot up onto the lower leg, opposite lower leg, like this. Now, a problem that can happen here is there's pressure where your ankle meets the other leg. So you're going to need something in there, some padding. Again, a pair of socks works really well, but some padding in here, like that, will relieve that pressure and keep your circulation flowing. Then there's half lotus, and that's where you come up all the way up onto your thigh, opposite thigh like this. And then of course with full lotus, which I don't do anymore because I've had knee surgery, uh, you pull the other leg up here. So both of the feet are, the bottoms of the feet are facing up. And here you can do the cosmic uh, mudra. And the, I find that my hands are a little bit supported by this foot that's up, or if both feet are up, supported, but if not, a little support cushion helps. And this posture for the hands, or this posture for the hands. I like this one for concentrating, because all of the acupuncture meridians are coming together in this, in this area, and it has more energy and focus but you experiment and see what works for you. Okay, last questions, whether we're sitting in a chair or we're sitting on a bench or we're sitting in a cross-legged posture. The last questions that usually arise are, what do I do with my mouth? And what do I do with my eyes? And what do I do if my legs fall asleep? So what do you do with your mouth? You want your mouth gently closed and your tongue on the roof of your mouth, just gently pressed against the roof of your mouth, that will keep a lot of saliva from flowing. Often when people start to meditate, they feel like they have to swallow and swallow and swallow because they become aware of saliva and they're worried they're bothering the person next to them. You're not bothering the person next to them and that problem will cease. But you start your meditation period maybe by swallowing, gently resting your tongue against the roof of your mouth, Closing your teeth. If you find that you clench your jaw when you uh, are meditating because of your carrying tension from the day, then you can put your tongue gently between your teeth as you meditate, and that will keep you from clamping down. So then swallow, and then begin meditating. Now, what about eyes? In some traditions, they say keep your eyes open, and focused about three feet ahead of you. In other traditions, they say, close your eyes. 
Again, experiment with this. Everybody's different, and different times in your meditation career, uh, different things work. So in the beginning, because the visual field is so distracting, many people close their eyes so they can focus on, say, a body scan or on their breath or on sound. But then as time goes on and you become more skilled in meditating, then uh, you can gently open your eyes, maybe at half-mast. And even sometimes there are some meditations where your eyes are wide open, but you're not looking at anything specifically. So you try all of those out and see what works best for you so that you're able to concentrate and not fall asleep. That's the danger of eyes closed, is that it's very easy to fall asleep. Now, what to do if your legs fall asleep? So it depends on what part of your leg falls asleep. If it's your, from the ankle down, falls asleep, then it's pressure here. So in this posture, if there's, if there's pressure here, my foot's gonna fall asleep. Or if I'm kneeling on a kneeling bench and my ankles are, are too stressed, then I need to hang my foot over the edge or put something under my ankles. And here I would need to put something, some padding under my ankles if that foot is falling asleep. If my leg is falling asleep from the knee down, then usually there's too much pressure here, right below my knee. And so I would put a support cushion there to relieve the pressure there. If my entire leg is falling asleep, that means the pressure is on the sciatic nerve, which comes out of your body just in front of your sit bones. So that means there's pressure right in front of your sit bones. Like right now, if I move forward and I sit on the edge of this uh, cushion, like if I'm sitting right here on the edge, this rim of the cushion is going to press up against my sciatic nerve and cut off the circulation in one or both of my legs. So then I would need to move back. And I can feel the difference. Now I don't have anything pressing up against my sciatic nerve or my sit bones. And of course, an air cushion is the ultimate solution for your legs falling asleep. So. Experiment with all of these postures. You may have to use them at various times in your life and enjoy your meditation.